Alright, welcome back to another episode of Pirate Naxus. We're sailing on here. It's been a few days since I last played, so I might need to get a bit wee re get a wee bit re-familiarized with the situation. The situation, in a word, is rough. We have been declared on and declared on and declared on again. Let's start with the big green elephant in the room. The Ottomans, they have consistently been demanding Naxus, and we have been consistently rebuffing them. And this time we have them on firm lockdown, and I have no intention of changing that. There's nothing diplomatically we need to play for peace for here. But the problem with keeping the Ottomans on lockdown is that they demand a huge amount of our fleet here. Granted, our fleet can repair in coastal sea zones, but we need to have a huge number of galleys to keep their navy contained, because they have the uh, enormous capacity to keep churning out more boats. We just have to rebuff that time and time again, and we shall do that exactly as much as we need. We're winning the war, no doubt, but they don't see it the same way, because my army is pathetic. So everybody thinks that their strength of alliances is far greater than ours. Remind me, how did you ally the Koreans? I don't recall allying the Koreans. Did I do such a thing? We don't have any fr- wait, what? Why am I allied- why would I have allied Korea? Oh, that's right, I wanted to subjugate the Koreans. But we need a military alliance. Oh, right, we have an alliance, but they need to be at peace. Oh, well, I'm sure they'll, uh, they'll peace out eventually, and then I will make them an ally. And then, I don't know, I'll have a nice strong ally that owns all of this Korea. Really, I don't remember why I did that, but did it, I did. <laughs> I've forgotten all about Korea. They'll probably be a liability or they'll disappear. So, with the Ottomans, I'm just keeping them under lock and key. They actually help us out financially quite a bit. These spoils of war do add up. And I am certainly, well, almost certainly making more than my boats are worth in money back. Although it costs a lot in sailors to have all these galleys out and available. Who would have thought sailors are actually a pretty important number for this campaign? Ottomans is one problem. Spain is a significantly larger problem because they are a global empire. Hell, they are everywhere. They far outdo me in the New World. They're around in uh, Southeast Asia. They're around in Africa. They have the capacity to build whatever they want, wherever they want. And there's no quick way to get Spain out of a war with me. Well, unless I want to surrender my everything to them. Whole bunch of colonial nations, including Spanish Australia, which is pretty disgusting. But we actually have them on the back burner when it comes to navy. We're able to far outshine them on the seas. But they're a global problem. They're everywhere. I just can't escape them. I can't even escape them right now. They really want to invade my capital of Draken. And they constantly want to take this uh, so-called Castilian land. In fact, they're working on that right now. I might just give up this slab of land because it doesn't make that... Okay, well, it does make actually quite good money. Ugh, but making units to take this back is also quite a chore. Uh, there's no easy way around that in my view. Still, the most important thing in my view is that I hold down the capital, because that'll give them some wild ideas about how well they're doing in the war. So I need to keep these six heavies probably around here to protect the area. So let's make sure you don't retreat south. Zulfkhar Barak. You're not that great, but I'm sure you'll keep this safe. This land I'll just have to uh, forfeit in terms of occupations. Don't give up your land, beat everyone, take everything. I, well, I mean they can occupy it. I will not be giving up land to the Spaniards without a fight. And then I'll take a paltry fight and say, well, that was fun, I give up. So yeah, Spain is a huge problem, and even if I piece them out, they're definitely going to come back a few years later. This is the second time they want to take back their colonial region, and yeah, their armies... I can't face these, not at all. If I recall well, I was able to force Portugal out of this war just by dumping on them and snagging their land. I think it cost me pretty heavily in terms of army, but here we go, we still have, we still have units here. They certainly need to consolidate, though. They've taken quite a uh, quite a spanking. We'll have them do that. Now, what's happening here? Well, we'll consider what we're going to do after we look at the third of our threats. Pasai decided it would be a good idea to declare war on me. And it certainly was. They are far more powerful than us locally. They've been able to take all of my Southeast Asian holdings and are even working their way up through the Philippines, thanks to their ally, Ternate. Well, overlooking them are some of the Psy's own uh, units. But there's also Yahor. Where is Yahor? What is Yahor? 
uh, to these few provinces here. No big deal. But the bad thing about this war is that they have a huge advantage on the seas against the 21 heavies from Versailles themselves. Tornate and Johor bring a fair few of their own, and a whole bunch of light ships. To the point where I withdrew my own military presence, because they would spank me silly. These guys are actually really up to date technologically, 18, 19, 19, so their ships are actually going to be better than mine. Although we've managed to stay up to date in terms of army. Don't know what to do with my admin. I quite like having uh, admin spare for all the lands that I'm bound to take. Uh, Japan is another consideration. We have slapped them quite a few times. We've taken over a lot of land and we've given it to our subject uh, Yamana, right? Yeah, Yamana. Yamana's drowning in cores. And if I was clever, I'd put them on scootage. Damn right I was clever. So they're not particularly happy with me, but we placated them, and I'm sure we'll we'll come to a mutual understanding of the situation. I'll have them annex half of Japan, I'll take the other half, I'll integrate them, and then all of Japan will be mine, and everything will be hunky-dory. That's the plan. But uh, plans are like biscuit rafts. They have a way of just falling apart. Now, my biggest concern that I have is money. Usually I run, I run very fiscally independent empires, but my army maintenance is crushing me because I have to depend so heavily on mercenaries. Uh, one bad battle and my manpower gets drained. This fleet of mine is huge and costs loads of money united, to the point where I'm even over, over force limit. It costs me quite a bit. Yeah, I'm over force limit by 30 ships. The thing is I can't really scale back on the... Um, on the galleys, because I need those to keep the Ottomans under lock and key. Uh, I certainly have galleys here that I could probably drop down on. You know, 61 is somewhat overkill. But if I ever come to blows with the Ming, I'm going to really want all of those galleys. And who knows, I may well sometime, because they probably don't like me very much. Oh, well, they're minus 100, probably because I've raided their coasts and are constantly pirating them. Because Beijing is the single biggest giver of ducats to us, 22 a month out of them. So yeah, quite the discrepancies on my bank balance. Lazy colonist, Jake. Yes, I was considering what to do with my colonist. And the best thing I can think of is to future-proof myself. As soon as 1700 hits, I should be able to start drowning in coal. And coal should keep me going quite nicely. I have all the... well, not all of them, but I will have all the British coal deposits. That's one, two, three, four, five of them. Uh, where else is there coal that I have under lock and key? Well, I can grab that for six, and hopefully, well, there's our seventh. There'll be an eighth one over in Japan, a ninth one over in Japan, and, you know, grab some more down and around here. That's the plan, at least. So, unless I was planning on anything else for this colonist, I think the best thing I can do is send them down to the land down under. Hopefully... Hopefully he doesn't get slaughtered by Iberians, but the Iberians are certainly getting their revenge on me in this campaign. Overkill, I think it's just enough kill. The power of coal. Yeah, coal may well see me through the worst of all of this. Doesn't show up here, but where can we see it? Here, for example. The price of coal is very high, and uh, since we have so much innovativeness, we should be able to get it on all the provinces once we have enlightenment. But Enlightenment is a wee bit away. It's only 1639. I'm just trying to think of ways to keep myself going in the future. I ride through the bad times now and hopefully be able to snowball eventually. Global warming, sponsored by Naxxus since 1700. Yeah, well, I'm also preparing for the Frostpunk, so I'll need all the coal for that as well. So what can I do to balance my books and, in fact, balance damn near everything? Uh... <laughs> Lots of stuff. I'm going to have to play this quite slow for quite some time, because everything's going on across the whole world here. I can't really budge on my position on the Ottomans. The only thing I would be willing to do is get a fleet over here, because there are some provinces here that are not being blockaded, and also not being raided. Can't be having that. We should be doing raids all the time, whenever. So do we have anything spare here? Not really. They're practically all working on it. I'm going to send some galleys down here because the Adriatic Sea is not working to full capacity on blockades ever since the Spaniards joined in the war. There's also a whole bunch going on here. There's a lot more to do against you. The Ottomans will probably be quite plucky and attack us here if I brought down my uh, strength of these galleys at all, so I'm not keen on doing that one bit. Yeah, it's funny. I have so many galleys here, and yet I want more. Okay, what I will be doing then... 
is grabbing my heavies, slaughtering the Spaniards with them. Uh, all of my uh, admirals appear to be assigned right now. Adrian Stugav, Demetrius Della, what's his facey? Uh, let's see. Yes, it makes sense that I have two of them ready for the... Alright, Demetrius, you do not need to be there. I don't need leadership here, but I will probably need it over here. And I certainly want this fleet to be able to travel as fast as possible. Which means I think I'd rather have... Privateer efficiency, trade power, neither of those particularly useful. I'll get Stugav over here because he's the fastest. And then I will exchange out our our ruler, um, our ruler admiral over there. We'll slaughter what we can of Spanish ships, and then I think, in my infinite wisdom, the best thing I can do with my units is have them defend Britain because Britain is pretty important to me. Um, and then once I've eradicated these ships off the Spaniards, I'll use my lights to keep them under lock and key, and then send my heavies over to deal with Pasai. My logic here is that Pasai I can and will knock out. In fact, I intend to absolutely glass Pasai. Whereas Spain, I've got no easy out on them. It's not like I can cut them off from somewhere, occupy them and kick them out. They have overwhelming forces against me and they're just everywhere. So I accept that I'm going to be at war with Spain for a long time. I will eat whatever pain they throw at me for a wee while, which I expect to be here. Um, where else could they potentially hurt me? They could hurt me in Britain, that's why I'm sending my units back there, and I do have these guys that should hopefully be able to defend against that a wee bit. Um, but I would like to keep them under lock and key, so perhaps if I leave just a few heavies and a bunch of my lights around here, I should be able to deflect all the Spanish pain train. Such is my thinking. I can see the captured flagships near Britain, yes, we're keeping these guys, even though it costs ridiculous money. Um, but hey, we can keep the... What's this? The Japanese, the Portuguese, the Dutch, and the Danish flagships. We had a few other flagships earlier, but they had to be... Uh, well, they didn't make it to the Preservation Society there. Okay, what do I do with these heavies? Uh, these lights, rather. I'm going to work on keeping Spain under lock and key, so that hopefully they don't use their many transports to cause me a lot of trouble. There's also the case of Vinland down here. A lot of my... Um, my money situation has been solved through raiding, and it's raid o'clock time for Vinland. I would actually like to colonize this crummy province as well, because these two provinces are... No, these two provinces, they're coal, or at least they could well become coal. And I quite like the sound of that. Once they become coal, they should be very much ripe for me to raid. What do the flagships do? Future museums? Wood source for Frostpunk? All of the above. I mean, we would tear them down in times of need, but for now, they're our trophy room for the future museums. Okay, so we're taking it slow, but I think I can unpause. And first... Okay, what's going on? First uh, order of case, I've slaughtered you, and hey, there's raiding that can be done around here. Are you all unraided? I can't be having that. I will... I don't seem to be under threat here, but I don't have any spare light ships. Normally I have light ships around here to wreak havoc with. Well, maybe they just couldn't quite cut the mustard. Because if there's raiding to be done, dang, do I need to be doing it. We'll get ourselves down here, and then back up to here, and then see what we can do here. Because I am very conscious of my capital being fairly undefended. But first things first, we grab everything we can, because I need that money, and I need those sailors pretty bad. We have uncored land. It's Mino, but I need to get a Shizen done first. I didn't... Oh, they're paper provinces. That's quite nice. But where's the gold? Do the Japanese still get their gold? Yeah, they do. I didn't take it for some reason. I'm sure I had my reasons. Probably that I wouldn't be able to get much out of it right now. Okay... Let's take it easy. I want you guys together here. I have you together here. And I want to get raiding everything we can around here. I'm pretty sure I built you long ago with a mind towards raiding. And now I have you. We can have you do this. And then I want you up there for future raiding. First things first. Okay, Vinland are making claims on us. They obviously heard my plans on the raiding. 
So I smacked down one of their heavies. In fact, I stole it for myself. It's a galleon. It's not a war galleon, but a galleon. And what I think I will do... Hey, I also grabbed a light ship. Forget that light ship. I will leave behind this galleon and a few other galleons. I think 14 is a good enough number of ships to go and crush those over in Pasai. But I think I'll take 15. Because our flagship, the Revenge of Amaralon, has... Yeah, it's got the improved Crow's Nest for extra fleet engagement width. That's like one more heavy right there. I'm not super keen on just leaving uh, a few heavies to take care of the rest of this, but it's as good as I can really do to keep Spain as much under lock and key as possible. Also, it seems there's more that I could raid, but the raiding efficiency is rock bottom, so never mind that. So, Stugav and all your ships. Oh man, one of you is a bit banged up, but it is a war galleon. There's no point taking a banged up ship on the journey I'm about to take you on. Can we organize perhaps a trade? I want something that's ready to kill. Okay, Stugav, I need... What's what's your best way to go over here? Is it round the Cape, or... Yeah, you reckon going around the Cape's the best idea, and I probably don't disagree. There's less damage to be done that way. Go over here and take care of our fleet by Naxus. I think uh, everything around here has been raided that can be raided. Except Pasai, of course, but they have good anti-piracy measures. That blows for me. Pirate Jake, back to EU4. Have a good one, says Single Malt 99 Oh, I will. I very much will. Yeah, it's been a few days since I last played this, which uh, is a bit of a shame, isn't it? I've got all these early frigates that are doing a whole load of nothing for me. I could either put them on Mothball, which would certainly get me those uh, sailors back and save me money, but if I have them, I'd rather invest them. And investing would be best done... <sighs> probably up in Beijing. It's where, all the, uh, it's where all the money goes. But there are diminishing returns to be had. There are fairly diminishing returns to be had. Perhaps I'll send you over to Hangzhou. Yeah, we'll see if that works out for us. Um, the rest of the ships I keep here for defense. If they try to land on me over in Kelang, I'm going to have a lot of problems. I'm also, since I'm not fighting, probably going to drop my army maintenance a lot to try and save up a bit of money. There are no battles I intend on taking right now, so why risk my ar uh, why risk my bank balance by draining my coffers so hard? There's also you guys just sitting around here. I'm wondering if I even want you, and I'm thinking that I don't. So I'm going to get rid of these mercs that cost me so much dosh. And I think just by doing this, I make some reasonable savings. And that was with lower um, lower expenditure. I was wondering, by the way, are you remaining in the dev uh, game dev industry, or will you be streaming full time from now on? And the latter, there, Dusty Girl and Marvin posted up well, a summary that I made about the situation. I got a cannon sitting around here, a loose cannon, if you will, but it should join up with the rest of my forces here. Uh, since you guys are heading along, you guys help out where you can. Those accursed... Uh, those accursed Spaniards occupying my lands, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that right now. You guys are heading over here in just a few days. Blop, blop, blop. So keep raiding those coasts, please. There's a lot to remember to do, and memory is not my strongest thing. Don't have a lot left to even fiddle around with here, but maybe I could pull some of these. I mean, I don't need 51 galleys to destroy you, but 51 is pretty good for making them not want to fight me. There's a war galleon here as well. I'd rather have them healed up as best we can. So let's grab you guys that are together now, bring you together. I don't think you need leadership. Well, I hope you don't need leadership, because you should be able to tackle all this. And what I will do is... Grab a bunch of your. Uh, grab a bunch of these lights. And have them try to keep the Spaniards under lock and key. There's no guarantee that I can do such a thing, but we'll do what we can here. Not you, not you. So, what does that mean? That means I want their ports taken care of. You, and you, and you. And what should the wild card do? 
there's certainly good blockading opportunities here, but I'd probably get slapped down by the Spanish. Mm, yeah, slapped down by the Spanish. Should have thought about what I was doing with you, right? Yes, 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 and probably. We'll see, they might get destroyed, but hey, that's what I have these guys around for. To be destroyed. Who are we playing as? We're Naxus, clearly. Okay, what else do I have to care about in a very short time period? Yeah, that massive fleet that I sent off that's going to destroy Pasai. I have to hold out until they get there, which is August this year, so i got a long time of feeling the pain between now and then. So I will enjoy the pain by raiding my enemies for all the dosh that I can, and I don't think there's anything else that I'm particularly worried about uh, for the time being. This is a bit of a bummer. You could say recruit some units to destroy them, it wouldn't be a lot, but I need to recruit six mercs to do that, I reckon, and that's going to cost me well over a hundred ducats. And for what? You know, he could just come back with more. I can't aptly defend this area. Ooh, they ran away, and it doesn't look like they're still retreating, so I might need to keep this under lock and key yet. Okay. Raid what I can for that dosh and those sailors. And for now, stay defending the Dalvarchen Sea, please. By the way, Jake, not sure if you noticed, but you are still playing EU4 and forgot to do the fake out. <laughs> Damn, Marvin, you're getting pretty good with the jokes. Okay, I have managed to uh, antagonize the Spanish into coming out and attacking. They think they have a good chance against our fleet. They probably do because I left my fairly banged up ships here. And they have their flagship, which makes their fleet a whole lot better than normal. Shame I can't uh, help out there. We do have more ships. We've got that going for us. But this is a battle that could well last some time. So let's go and help out as best we can. But it does tell me that the Spanish think they can take me on there. Which is gutting, really. I'd like to eradicate that war galleon. But it's a heavy ship. And it's uh, very durable. Extremely durable, in fact. We might have a hard time knocking them out. But we'll try our best. Our durability is very good, because not only do we have a navigator in charge here, we also have naval ideas completed. Maritime naval exploration expansion, and we haven't touched quantity yet, might go a ways to explain why our army is so pathetic, and everyone thinks they can take us on. We're actually losing a bit of innovativeness, aren't we? I'm kind of tempted just to take this to keep that high. Oh no, no, we're ahead of time in Miltech, then my reasoning has fallen through. Okay, you guys get back to defending that. These fellows down here still have a ways to go, go. But they'll make their way to the next one on the 15th. Alright, alright. Let's make sure that those accursed Spaniards don't drop us dead. The morale doesn't look too good for me, nor do the dice rolls. But we have, we have reinforcements coming in. I'm very sadly losing these lands. That is gutting, because they're actually worth decent dosh to me. Uh, I want more of those gems, right? Your other heavies are very close. Just reinforce. No, I need to make sure that we actually go and deal with our uh, our friends down in Southeast Asia. If I continue to let the Spanish roll around me like that, then all is lost anyway. Okay, so I know he thinks he can take me here. Let's have our ships stick together here. And we will continue to have them under lock and key here. There we go. Hopefully they don't get any bright ideas, but the thing about the Spanish is they could definitely raise more uh, more heavies against me. I don't know where they all are, and it worries me greatly, but I'm doing all I can here. Okay, speaking of doing all I can, we run back to destroy this... Uh, there are three of the Spanish heavies. Where are they off to? Well, Davy Jones' locker, I should hope. And now there are, as always, places to raid and money to get. So let's get that money and raid those places. I mean, Vinland won't be happy with me, but too bad. Uh, I've been helping my subject convert to Catholicism, because I definitely want these lands for myself, and I don't want them to be drowning under lack of... Um, lack of... lack of... religious unity. 
in the places with low autonomy are great, but they're all pretty low autonomy. So let's just look at this and go, including my subjects, what gets me the biggest unity for Bok here? Looking at the Shinto ones, of course. Uh, is this really sorting by unity? 10, 9, 11, 12? Yeah, I guess it is. But then 2? What madness. Anyway, Aki looks good, and it doesn't take too long, and it doesn't cost too much. Bungo looks pretty much better, but let's do that. 20 ducats I'm not going to cry over yet. <sighs> okay. Jinx, it's only been a month, but this is already uh, pretty stressful. But we'll, we'll pull on through, right? Even if we crashed out in all of these wars. That's the magic of this game. We can bounce back. I've lost wars before. I've lost a lot of wars before. You guys all look pretty good. You'll very slowly reinforce. We have this Merc. I'm getting rid of that Merc because I got to save my money. And we'll keep our transports here for just in case. Might be better to have you over here where there's a wonderful fort to keep you all protected. A big part of me is tempted to build a bunch more galleons because evidently I don't have enough heavy ships to survive everything I want to survive. It'll eat into my money in a pretty big way, but it will help me keep these wars afloat for myself. Uh, and that's probably a good enough reason to do it. I should do it where they don't take too long to make, though. 400, 400, 400, 300. How many do I have down here again? I got three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a lot of money burnt, and it's going to continue to cost a lot of money. But what the Pasai War showed me is that I am completely incapable of projecting my power across the world right now. And the trick to be able to do that is investment in the fleet. The fleet that I have been ignoring for way too long. Also, you guys are drinking attrition. But I'm going to keep all of you there because you're going to be vital in the counterattack upon Pasai when, in August, I have my fleet there ready to crush you. And I'm... Oh, well, why not raid along the way? Kayor, well, hey, <laughs> try and pay for yourself. Grab five sailors, we know we need them. Because, yeah, we're in a 100, 130 deficit of sailors every... Uh, every month. Whew, okay, well, let's keep it going. Poso, self-sustaining. Where was Poso? Ah, Poso was here, and now it's done. Ah, my colonist would have been pulled back because it was occupado. But you aren't part of the trade company, so I'll add you, even though you're currently uh, a bit occupied. Alright, hopefully I've not been overpaying on my colonist. Oh, I guess that's why I had a free colonist. Well, what do you know? Or I pulled you back on purpose. Stugav will sadly no longer serve us. That is a real pain, because you're the one currently bringing my ships over here. And nobody else has particularly good stats for that. And I can't afford another Admiral. Uh, I'm going to have to wait until I can afford another Admiral. But I only get three Diplo per month. So that's going to take me three months to get you. And you're going to be traveling in open areas until then. Ugh, that blows. So I'm going to pull you back. Oh, you're busy fighting. Hmm. Then pulling you back is probably not a good idea. But I need to defend this. Alright, go figure the Spanish and just occupying me like crazy here. We're outside of raiding uh, possibilities for you, but once you are here, then you should be able to do more. Hopefully the Sea of Tochwan has good things for me, but I swear I had more, uh, more boats when I entered this battle. I have to have a lot of faith in my, uh, my ships. That's the story of this entire, uh, entire run, really. Let's keep grabbing that dosh and those sailors. Make sure we win our naval engagements. Yeah, this one's in the bag. They only have transports left. Might even steal a few to add to Santa Maria. Jake, when will we get more Frostpunk? Oh, well, people obviously don't want the EU4, so it's time for that Frostpunk fake-out. It's what I'd say if I wasn't that serious about uh, getting on with Pirate Naxus. I really do want to get this one done prim and proper. I don't want to have an Ebenezer Scrooge-style... Uh, hauntings of EU4 ca uh, campaigns not finished. No way, no how. These guys are repairing, which is good. Don't know when the Ottomans are going to come and brutalize me, but I'm sure the day will come. 
I feel like some of you should go out and help with the Spanish blockades. Just for money, if nothing else. And then there's this war galleon. I don't even know what his game is, but I'm going to send him over here regardless. Hopefully he doesn't get uh, intercepted. Come on, crush those Spaniards. At sea and by land. we mu Oh, they're reinforced with more transports. Fine by me. If they want to throw their transports away, that's all the better for me. Grab the Dosh by the coastline and keep on moving. There's nothing to raid here. But please do the Portuguese lands and then get back to base and we'll find other places for you to raid. One, two. Ooh, I could raid. Uh, let me think. One, two. Yeah, I could raid all of this, I reckon. Seems to be within my range. So we'll do that after you're done there. So, so much to pay attention to. But I got to. There we go, because he can, he can build his ships over here all he wants. I do not have the capacity to keep Spain in total lockdown. And also a bunch of his, uh, his ports are outside of my range anyway. But by doing stuff like this, I can really dissuade him from using transports around here. That heavy scares me a bit. He could jump out with that heavy, and my 15 probably wouldn't beat that 8 because of the heavy. These guys could pull in, but I'd take losses. I would definitely take losses. And then there's these guys, of course. Just chilling over by the Danes, keeping an eye on them, making sure they're not up to no good. What's Italian uh, Italian opinion of me? Eh, it's not great. I have raided their coasts for a very long time. Honestly, I'd like to raid them some more. They're looking very unraided right now. And that's a lot of dosh to be had. But in order to do that properly, I'd have to have piracy going on here. And I just don't have the light ship capacity to manage that right now. Alright, the money is looking okay. Ish. I can I can handle that much of a deficit. That we can deal with through the economy of raiding everything under the sun. Okay, let's keep it going. Now I've got myself blockaded. Can't be having that. Great Britain's no longer a valid rival for some reason. That's a shame because I still want to brutalize them and I can't name rivals whilst at war. That'll probably actually hurt my power projection, but PP is looking pretty good after brutalizing the GBs. Sure, Brandenburg, give uh, military access where I can, because otherwise I get hurt. Ah, there we go, got myself a new galleon without having to pay for it, because, as we say, who pays? Let's get yourself back in there, restored, and ready to raid some more. Seven around here is pretty good, but I'm a bit gutted about this. I'm pretty happy that they've stopped their attempt to occupy everything. They're probably scared and want to go elsewhere. Probably. I mean, I'm just making up feelings for the AI sometimes. But I'll believe it. Mm, I mean, I could smack that down, no problem, right? Why don't I just send my galleys? Over here to continue the long standing tradition of screwing the Ottomans forever. Especially when there are coasts to raid. It's not quite enough to do everything, but we'll, we'll make it come together. There go the Spanish galleons, they needed to reinforce again. I'm not sure what exactly you mean there, but the Spanish are pretty low on heavy ships. I intend on keeping it that way. Okay, hopefully I can use you over here, but you're probably outside of range now. No, you won't be, because we have this. So once you're here, ah, dang. Dang it all. You'll be outside of range for a wee while. Well, I won't turn you back because it'll just cost me more that way. It's what I would say, but you're going to drink a lot of attrition on the way. Ah, he's already locked in. Then the only next place he could reasonably reinforce is over here in the Andamans, so I'll just let him carry on his way. Because, yeah, too far. Oh, but not uh, not so far that we can't raid along the way. So let's raid along the way. Raid along every way you can. Hello, Portuguese. I'm glad I kicked you out of the war, or else you would have caused me some dire problems. So we're keeping our finances and our sailor uh, industry afloat. Because, gosh, do I need my sailors. Could you maybe bait the Ottoman fleet out of their ports to destroy them for war score? Uh, probably, but that's not really where this is all at. I get war score for defending Naxus, and war score doesn't matter. In fact, I would like to keep my war score 
below 60% because I don't want to have call for peace here and since I know they're just going to attack me unless I think it is vital that I punch four and a half thousand ducats out of them I'd rather just keep myself at war with the Ottomans because it gives me uh, stability over here uh, not the greatest looking stability I'll, uh, I'll concede but there is stability to knowing where my foe is having his fleets completely in lockdown and not having to dedicate anything beyond that so I'm satisfied enough with the Ottoman situation for now. Okay, here you guys are. Uh, I really don't need these transports weighing you down. And let's just ditch you as well. And let's go and raid these coastlines, please. One, two. We'll be able to raid these. Well, there's nothing here to raid, actually, so... And I don't have the range from here, either. One, two, or one, two. No. So we'll just raid this and then get back and be happy with it. This blows. This is what blows the most. I can't wait until uh, the turn of the year when I can have my big face off against Johor's navy. And then, not Johor's navy, although Johor does have a navy to show down, but Pasai. If I can sink Pasai whilst their troops are located here, I should be able to regain this, blockade the strait, and crush one half of Pasai. Probably the half of the capital and the gold on it. Although this is probably more development per se. Still capital's worth it. Oh, and let's not forget the raiding oppor- no. The raiding opportunities. What is this mod about? It's not the America. This is Random New World. Honestly, I would have fared a lot better with the Americas, because then I could just have the Caribbean to defend, but with all this stuff around here, which I swear someday will be mine, but I just don't have the power to project that far. We'll make it so. Alright, get over there and raid that. I don't need to worry about anything else, and I don't want to have to keep concerning myself with you. Spain's under lock and key. Ottoman's under lock and key. The only ongoing problem that I have for now is my lack of admiral. Oh, yeah, and my my deficit, of course. The deficit's pretty bad. Go, guys. Oh, and don't forget to raid along the way. That's quite hilarious. Alright, they're running out of things to occupy here, so I worry that they might get their forces together. Looks like Manchu is attempting another invasion of Japan. I don't think they'll do so well, but as long as they knock out each other's fleets quite nicely, that does for me. Hello, free money. Hello, free sailors. Um, let's get back to defending my... Oh, I didn't raid the coast of Zig. Can't be having that. Yeah, as soon as I can knock Pasai out, I'll be a whole lot happier, because not being able to knock Pasai out is hurting me greatly. Yeah, Pasai really opened my eyes to my own vulnerability in this campaign. Grab that. Stay cozy back home in Draken, or Dragon's View. I'm going to need to deal with Britain someday. Maybe I should get more claims on him while I wait. Mm, I like having lots of free diplomats, especially when I'm this worldwide, but maybe that's going a bit above and beyond. There are also these guys sitting around, not doing a whole lot of good for me. I would like them to work here, but it's a big risk that they actually get stomped on. What I could do is mothball them to save a bit of dosh, but it's hardly any dosh. And the sailors might not even work for me there. What vulnerability? Uh, the fact that I'm so overextended I can't defend all my areas. The fact that I don't have the army to reject even precise advances. Uh, the fact that I only really had the navy of heavies to stop Spain and Spain alone. The moment that uh, Pasai joined in that, I had to split my navies. And that's why I have a, a mere four heavy ships defending against all of Spain here. Uh, whilst the others make the arduous journey to save myself. There's going to be a few open sea zones that are going to hurt their integrity pretty hard. So they'll actually have to wait and heal up in the Andamans. Hopefully they don't get curb stomped along the way. Alright, so, yeah, there we go. Those are to be expected. But they didn't expect this. Give me your dosh, Spain, and all of Spain's friends. 
Okay, that is... Oh, no, it was raided recently, potentially by me, which is even funnier. With you here, there's more raiding can be done, so I'm just going to bring you over here and continue the raid o'clock. It's not that the development is sky high around here, but it's nothing to sniff at either. It's one thing the random new world gives you is some uh, stupendously well-endowed provinces. Jake is going to lose that whole navy. The Russian home fleet is making its way to Japan again. I have nothing to fear about Russia. In fact, I'd quite like to be their friend. That said, well, as long as I keep the Ottomans busy in war, the Russians shouldn't be attacked by them. Yeah, it would actually go a long way to be, make friendly with the Russians so they don't see me as a target. Losing to Russian in the Pacific, as if. I can't imagine doing that. And I don't intend on doing that either. Okay, not a whole lot going on. There will be blood, apparently. I'm going to have you stand guard. Maybe not you, actually. I will have one transport stand guard. That way, if they do try to invade me here, I will get a notification, and then these guys can just jump out and crush them. That's my thinking. The Spanish continue to sail around, but hopefully they'll just pick up these guys and sort off. They've occupied some good development of mine, but the autonomy is already pretty high, so what are you going to do? What I need to do is consider my truces, right? Uh, time up with Britain in four years. And the other is quite far away, but I will need to finish off Britain. I'm not the, the, the I'm not held in particularly high regard in Europe, probably because of what I did to the Danes, and the Danes hate me. But I do need to slaughter Britain. I'll probably need to actually straight up attack them as soon as the truce is up even though they outnumber me massively and I don't have the assets to pull off anything against them. But I have left them with no fortifications, so I should be able to just waltz on in. As long as I can crush their army, I can have my filthy way with the British, even if that's more money than, um, than land at this point. So we continue to sail over there, hopefully get there in time without losing my navy. I don't think anybody around here likes me enough to give me fleet basing rights. Hello, Kilwa! I ever mentioned that I love you? Let's get over to one of these provinces. I can't turn around and hit these up yet, but yeah, let's go to one of these, get ourselves a bit of that, and we'll take less attrition. That'll save us on sailors on the journey over. Thanks, Kilwa. Wow, what a nice guy. Which means I'm definitely wasting too many of my diplomats here since it takes so long to do anything. How long are these claims good on Britain for? 58. Alright, screw it. I don't have the diplomats for all this. Songhai's having conflicts, but aren't we all? There's a bunch of raiding that could actually be done up here first. Although if I send you there, I'm going to lose to the Spanish fleet there. Possibly. The development is nice. I want that. That's nah, not worth the risk, right? You are single-handedly generating a whole lot more dosh than many others. So get over there for me. Nothing else that is really catching my imagination. So we can continue doing what we're doing, which is winning. 51 EU is quite a lot, but I'm quite confident the Ottomans... Oh, it's a big fleet for me to worry about. And I do worry about it. Why do I have all these galleys just sitting around, though? They should be being put to work. Particularly on the Spaniards. Because I hate them. They were probably repairing up from a battle that I had against the Ottomans before. Somebody in the future is going to be watching the whole playlist of um, Naxus and wondering why I've forgotten everything from the previous episode between then and today. Truth is, there's been a few days between uh, the recording of that and this, and I'm not good at remembering. Well, there's one of my colonies started up, East Timor. Hopefully nobody grabs that. And in a few days then, Flores is joining the family. <laughs> a few days, says Kaiser. That's been a few days. 
for given values of few. All right, we don't actually have what it takes to uh, grab everything here, I think, but we'll grab everything that we can. Oh, and that was all of these, that's cool. Then let's grab you and go home. Yes, five development of colonial land is worth my time here. This is really sad, I'm getting so much occupado here. Uh, it's not causing tons of war exhaustion, but it's causing more than I would like to have. Uh, naval tradition is sky high. But we don't strictly need another admiral right now. In fact, I don't... You know, I'm kind of lacking one admiral, so I'm going to assign you here. You're going to get your tick. And then continue on your way. Pretty please. From there, you'll be able to sweep down and crush Pasai. I also need you to team up with these to get all of you, and I do have the capacity for all of you, over to destroying them. And the galleys will spread out and absolutely mince them. And I will raid, and I will occupy, and I'll just generally be the biggest kid on the block in this Pasai War, which thankfully I'm not losing so much that I'm being able to be forced out in peace, but that'll change if I don't get my rear in gear. Okay. You gonna raid those British for me? Yep, that's the best five ducats I've ever had. You don't even need to stop in by there. We just need to go and hit up these friends. Oh, I'm so glad they didn't continue with this. Oh, they are continuing with this. Oh, right. And I am getting attacked here and I didn't pay attention to it. I said I would, but I didn't. What's attacking us? Certainly no heavies, so I should be able to destroy these no problem. But the lack of... Mm, I won't be able to defend against this in that case. I would if it weren't for this battle, but this battle is going to take too long, even for my sevens. Alright, well, let's get ourselves a new admiral, because, well, what's this dip going to do otherwise? And... Hmm, who are we going to have in for this? Tick tock, tick tock in the head. I think we're gonna have green gauges join us. And green gauges is pretty fast, and pretty good at shock. That siege does a whole lot of not much for us. Hopefully, that speed will get them down to save from this in time. So if they can knock these out, and then knock you out, and then get back, I'll stop these guys from invading the rest of my island here. And I really don't want them to. Franconian keeps thinking that it's uh, a fake-out time. Not yet. I mean, no. Of, co of course I'm not going to fake out. I'm here for reals, and if you can't believe that, well, time to check your trust thinger-thinger. What is it called? Trust issues. Alright, that went pretty fast. Got you crushed. Even scored ourselves a, uh, an extra couple of transports that I really don't need. Every extra ship that I'm getting is just adding to the cost of my overforce limit. Especially for all those get, uh, those heavies that I've commissioned and will eventually be done. We haven't even cleared a year. We've cleared like seven months in this so far. But trust me, this is so delicate. Oh, you shouldn't trust me. But it is delicate. Election in the Pirate Confederacy. We've got Demetrius Della Carceri. But based on, based purely on the fact that he's a navigator, I want to keep him around because that's useful for these big wars. Good, but oh, hello, military power. And if I keep you around for a wee bit longer, maybe we'll get something else out of you, something good. Hmm. All right, so far so okay. Alright, looks like I scared them off from there, or they moved up here. Silly of them, but as long as I keep this going, we're all good. Don't know what it has. Better hull, the merchant man, or the early frigate. Hull size 24, hulls. Okay, definitely the merchant man then. So we'll keep this going around here. It's really important to me that I defend this. If they start taking this, they'll go, oh, we've got your capital. And my capital is quite well developed. I don't want to lose that. These lands, however, they have autonomy, they're full of Spaniards. I'm not their biggest fan, basically. Right, let's keep it going. Thagnus is saying that this channel used to have 2,000 viewers. I choose not to believe that. Things are good now. 
Let's try not to think about not good times. Alright, I'm not sure if I want to give up my... Yeah, I, I'll do it now. Thanks for fleet basing rights, so I'm going to get rid of them. I quite like Kielba, and I certainly like the fact that they like me. I should check out just how much of a naval force they have to offer. I'm less concerned about their army, but let's still check it out. Whew, not bad. Dang, I don't want to get on the wrong side of Kielba, even though I would quite like Madagascar. And he's been building naval equipment manufactories here. If I wasn't at war, he'd certainly want an alliance, but we are at war, and oh, the bastard's allied with Spain. Hopefully, since he likes me, he'll never turn on me. But you never know. Kielba getting dragged into a war with me would be a big pain. But since I'll be at war with Spain for eternity, I don't see that as big risk right now. What I see as a big risk is not getting the same kind of income from Beijing as I got before. Why is it only 15 now? Have they invested in anti-piracy measures? No. Have they redirected trade? Yes, the Han 